Space games are perhaps one of the most compelling of genres within gaming. When they get it right, there's really nothing quite like the feeling of living a space life. When they get it wrong, however, there can be some spectacular fallout. Here then are five things that can make space games great, and three things that, well, can be a little problematic, shall we say. Space. The final frontier. Yes, it's a big place out there. Naturally then, environments are a huge part of any space game. This in turn means that scale is essential to convey that aspect of space, but it doesn't necessarily follow that a game need to use real-world scale, nor does it need to include the entire universe. Whilst there are engines out there capable of doing this, and the Space Engine is a good one of those, it isn't essential. The most important part is a consistent sense of scale. So, whether it's EVE Online, No Man's Sky, Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen, each of these convey a scowl in their own way. They do it consistently and effectively and give the player the sense of existing within a vast game world. To me then, this is one of the most important aspects of any space game. Fortunately, the vast majority of them seem to quickly hit the mark on this. X4 Foundations and Everspace 2 are more games that convey a decent sense of being in space. Ultimately, the number of star systems and the sight of the worlds isn't the most important factor, at least not to me. The most important factor is to make the player feel that they exist within a huge environment and vast speeds and of course a spaceship are required to cross that distance. It's a commonly held misconception that more always equals better. That's not necessarily true and generally isn't true when it comes to space games. In my experience, variety is far more important than quantity. For example, I would much prefer three spaceships that are each unique in size, scope, flight model and cockpit as opposed to 100 ships that are each very similar to each other. Likewise, isn't it better to have a small number of highly detailed planets rather than millions of empty worlds? Of course, there is some middle ground here because variety doesn't necessarily limit itself to environment or equipment. For example, a million planets are fine if there are many ways to interact with them. A huge number of similar looking ships is fine if they each serve a different functional purpose. Variety then, unsurprisingly, comes in a huge mix of shapes, forms and combinations. It really shouldn't be underestimated how important this is for a high quality space game. Spaceships are easily the most vital aspect of a space game. Without ships, there would be no way to explore or experience space, yet spaceships are out far more than just exploration or combat. They're actually a key aspect of how a player interacts with the game world. In short, they are a bond that the player builds. Further, they could even be considered a vital part of the player's identity within the game world. It's important then for any space game to have a strong focus on how it implements spaceships. Fortunately, most game developers are aware of this, Star Citizen is an obvious example here. With a focus on detailed ship designs, robust ship interior system and detailed ship mechanics, these elements help to make the player feel as though they are genuinely owning a real starship. This sense of ship identity extends into the real world with CIG's heavy ship marketing, something that has generated hundreds of millions of dollars for the company. Now, it's very easy to lose focus here and start discussing the positives and negatives of CIG's marketing campaigns, but really, for the purposes of this subject and for the purposes of this video, it's not so much about CIG's methods of their marketing. Instead, for this specific subject, it highlights how important spaceships are to the player. My Star Citizen is certainly the best example of a game that understands how important spaceships are to the player. It certainly isn't the only game. Fleet Dangerous has dozens of classic and modern ships. No Man's Sky has a vast range of procedurally generated ships. There's two very important points to take away here then. The first is that the ship should have internal consistency within the game world and its rules, and we come back to that subject in just a moment. The second point is that ships are the uh, lens through which the player experiences the game world. This then is an obvious reason why special focus on ships is so important for any space game. A dead galaxy is a boring galaxy. This is true for any game world, however it seems doubly important for space games. 
The larger a game world is, the worse it will feel if empty and lifeless. Now, each currently popular space game handles this in a different way, and none of them have it wrong. However, some do a better job of this than others, and there's a variety of reasons for this. I've always felt that a living, breathing world is the soul of any game. And this is one of the reasons that single-player games such as Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption work so well. The same is true for The Witcher 3 and many other examples. However, these require vast resources and tons of handcrafted content. Star Citizen could be argued to be following this method. Other games, however, such as Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky, rely upon procedural generation to build partially automated content creation. Ultimately, it's a system that can and does work. The repeated nature of visuals, however, and other content can very quickly become a problem. EVE Online, meanwhile, brings its galaxy to life through the interaction and actions of the player base. Here, everything from the economy to wars is driven by the players, and it can work remarkably well. Regardless of method then, perhaps one of the most important aspects of any space game is the believability and life that it contains. The four points mentioned so far are all very important. Scale, variety, spaceships and life. However, none of it works in isolation. None of it works without internal consistency. The tone of a space game can vary wildly from title to title. Some are hard science, others are cinematic centric, others still are of a fantasy or simply action nature. Whatever tone the game takes, however, the most important aspect is internal consistency. A space game that follows hard science one minute but breaks its own rules the next can certainly be problematic. As an example, this is something that Elite Dangerous struggles with at alarming regularity. For example, anti-gravity doesn't exist, yet the game lacks any functional zero-g environments, even when in zero-g environments. It's one example among many, you don't have to look too far to encounter more. Conversely, No Man's Sky clearly exists within the realms of fantasy. However, the game is very good at following the rules it sets for itself. Internal consistency then, whether for narrative, movies, books and even space games, is the glue that gels all the important parts together. The scale of space can so easily be the undoing of a game, and one vital reason for that is time. Now time is, for many people, the most precious of commodities in existence. It's arguably certainly more important than money. The most critical mistake that any space game can make then is to waste a player's time. Unfortunately, it's a common mistake that games often make regardless of genre, but two examples are an unnecessarily long travel time and repeating gameplay that asks players to loop the same action over and over. I could list endless examples here, but that really isn't the point of the video. To keep it simple then, if a space game values the player's time, then players will value the space game. This is a common problem for many games regardless of genre, however it's a problem well worth pointing out. Don't add irrelevant features that don't fit with the currently established game world. A perfect example of this is EVE Online's Incarno update. This update added the captain's quarters and allowed players for the first time to exit their ship and walk around. Now, in the end, the problem wasn't so much that the captain's quarters was rubbish, they were actually very good. The real problem was that the developers failed to add any meaningful gameplay that fit with the existing gameplay already established within EVE and the EVE universe. EVE, of course, isn't the only game that has a monumental failure in this regards. The X series made a similar mistake with X Rebirth. One often mentioned problem here was locking players to a single ship. One of the X series' key identities is the ability to own a fleet of ships. X Rebirth then was majorly jarring with locking players to just a single ship. Elite Dangerous has also made the same mistake with Odyssey. Adding on foot FPS gameplay is an awesome addition in concept, however, the lack of integration with a pre existing game is certainly problematic. Irrelevant features then are born of the third thing to avoid. Just as internal consistency is the glue that holds together all the important parts of a space game, a lack of identity is the dynamite that will blow a game apart. Most successful space games are successful because they understand their identity and they work to those strengths. This is the reason so many genres, regardless of medium, 
have been very successful over the years and over the decades. Dune is an amazing sci-fi. Lord of the Rings is amazing fantasy. They both have extremely strong senses of their own identity. Yet sometimes a fictional world or a game loses its sense of identity. This is something we saw with the recent Star Wars movies, although it's managed to recapture some of its identity with The Mandalorian. It's also a reason why DC movies generally objectively suck. A space game then that loses its sense of identity or otherwise has a lack of self-identity will hit numerous pitfalls. It's easily the biggest mistake a space game can make and one which unfortunately will lead down a very rocky road. Now I'm not going to give any examples for this particular point, I will leave that one for you to decide. So then, that's five things that can make great space games and three things that will generally cause problems. Do let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comment section below. Are there any points that I missed that you feel I should have included? As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.